Julie Wilson here again today and I have something a little different for you. I'm not going to be showing you a card, but I'm going to show you my piercing technique. And we're just going to talk a little bit about what's involved here. Um, Creative Expressions has a piercing ruler and this ruler, it's clear so you can see through it. It has piercing holes all the way down one edge. It also uh, has the measurements in millimeters and in inches, so if you're a little like me and you just go imperial, then you're good to go. Um, but there's, it's not a difficult thing to do, and I get a lot of people asking me about this, so what I've done is I've created just a, a little kind of fake topper to show you. So, so pretend this is the topper that you're using on your card, and it doesn't matter what shape your topper is, what size it is, all you want to do is take the piece that you want to pierce and cut it so it's about a half an inch larger all the way around, okay? That's an estimate, and that works fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card, and I'm going to put it down with the edge of the ruler with the piercing holes next to it, and line that up on the edge. Now, I personally find this easier to do if I line the edge of the card up with one of the uh, quarter-inch measurements, so it's a little darker there, okay? And there's a hole that sits right on that edge, one more here, and then this one. So it's basically two full holes in. I take a stick pin and I put it into that first hole. Now, just to hold that into place, I'll take another one and just pop it in somewhere along that line that I know is um, shorter than my card. So I'm gonna have to go through that to begin with. Then I take my topper and I line this back up over here. And if I go in one eighth of an inch, so you've got the little dotted measurements there at the edge of that topper, Go to wherever the nearest one is past the other side of it, and then you're going to go another eighth of an inch past that. I'm going to move that hole, that pin over into that hole. And that's the size that I know that I need to go with whatever size topper I'm going to be doing. Now the piercing tool that I use has got a one millimeter diameter um, tip on it. And you want to know, you want to make sure that you go all the way through your paper because it, as you can see, there's a little bit of a taper to the top of these. So if you just go in a little ways, you're not going to get the full size of the hole. So you want to take your piercing tool, and I always hold the ruler as I go, and just poke it all the way down. And as you notice, I have a firm sponge mat under me. See, it, you can't really press into that. It's not a, um, a mouse pad or styrofoam. It's very, very firm. And that's also important because it keeps everything steady. So I'm just going to work that piercing tool through each one of those holes, moving my fingers as I go, and holding that ruler into place. Okay, I'm going to get over to the end here and just get that last hole in, all right? So I can take this out of place, and if you notice, the stick pins are slightly smaller. So what I'm going to do is take and pierce those again with the tool so they all line up. All right, so now I've got the first side done. So to work around the edge here, I'm going to put the hole in the last hole I pierced on that side. Now you notice I've got a slightly larger piece here. So what I do is I just eyeball to make sure that that's even all the way across. I'll stick one of my stick pins in to hold it, and I run my piercing tool along that so I know that's where I'm going to cut it. Okay, go back over. And this one's just a little square, so it's probably about the same. Go back over, start again, so it's 1 16th of an inch in, or excuse me, 1 8th. Go all the way over here, find the edge, and then move that stick pin over to the following one. So I have a little bit of a gap going around, okay? So next, I'm just going to run my piercing tool in all of these. And occasionally you'll miss one, you'll have to go back over but for the most part, it's just moving it into one, into the next, and following through. There we go, get that there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this, bring this back over. Remember to pierce that very last one. Put your stick pin back in there, and it doesn't actually matter where you put it on that ruler, but this one, I'm gonna line that up so it's at the end. So if I can get this about the same distance all the way down, I know that this second one's gonna go right there, okay? 
I also draw a line with the tip of my um, pokey tool just to mark that and then run this around. Working it in each of these holes. And it's easiest if you can keep your pokey tool straight up and down so it goes into those holes very smoothly. There we go. And get that last one. Now, this should just be a simple matter of making sure that one's there. Putting this back into place. Putting this one in the last hole. Should be a straight run to home. And then as I move the pokey tool down, I want to move my hand so it holds it firm on the ruler. And then if that little guy gets in your way, you can just move it and hold it. There we go. So now I can pop my paper cutter here. Just line that line up. And excuse me, I have to be right over the top of that to make sure and then cut that and then just trim off where that little scratch is into the paper. There we go. So now I know I've pierced this exactly where it needs to be to be a perfect fit around my topper. And then usually I'll matte and layer with another color and then a final base coat underneath. But see how simple that is. So your piercing tool does all the work for you, but gives you such a beautiful look on your finished product. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you back again soon.